Good morning and welcome to the Legislative Briefing Breakfast. I'm Deborah Youngblood. I'm privileged to get to be your host today. I'm the Executive Director of the Oklahoma Aggregates Association. What are aggregates? Most people ask me. That's the rock, sand, and gravel that starts all infrastructure. You drive on it. It's the walls of your house, the foundation of your house, stuff like that. So glad to be here with you all. We have a really outstanding group today. Of course, we hoped to do all of this in person, but Mike Neal failed to appoint a weather committee. And so, you know, here we are. That's what we've got. So thanks for being with us virtually. And it's our pleasure today. We're going to introduce a little bit later on the leaders of the Oklahoma legislature who will be here with us today for a panel discussion. And then after that, we're going to hear from legislators from around our area to find out what their goals are for the upcoming session. Well, first, I want to introduce to you our presenting sponsors. We are happy to uh, acknowledge uh, American Bank and Trust Company, represented by Director and Tulsa County Clerk Michael Willis. Also, One Gas, represented by Julie White, Vice President of Communications and Public Affairs. Osteopathic Founders Foundation, represented by President and CEO Sherry Wise. And TTCU Credit Union, represented by Shelby Beal, Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer. Our goal sponsors are Ascension St. John, represented by Chief Advocacy Officer Lucky Lamons, AT&T, represented by Michael Cooper, Government Relations Representative, and the Oklahoma Aggregates Association, represented by me and I think about eight of my bosses out there watching this morning, so say nice things about me, please. Our legislative benefactors are the Cherokee Nation Businesses, represented by Cherokee Nation Principal Chief Chuck Hoskin, Jr., Community Care, represented by President and CEO Bob Bush. Cox Communications, represented by Vice President and Tulsa Market Leader Roger Ramsire. The George Kaiser Family Foundation. The Grand River Dam Authority, represented by Leah Malloy, Public Affairs Manager. Hillcrest Health Care System, represented by Eric Eaton, Director of Operations. Public Service Company of Oklahoma, represented by President and Chief Operating Officer Peggy Simmons. Quick Trip, represented by Manager of Public and Government Affairs, Michael Junk, and Tulsa Tech, represented by Tony Heberlin, Chief Communications and Economic Development Officer. Now, even though we don't have our corporate tables here to actually look at, these are corporate table sponsors. We hope that you'll take note of these and do business with these folks anywhere you can. Well, as mentioned earlier, we're honored to have the leaders of the Oklahoma legislature here with us this morning. Let me introduce to you a little more formally the Speaker of the House, Charles McCall. He was elected to the House in 2013. He represents District 22, which includes the counties of Atoka, Garvin, Johnston, and Murray. Also, Representative Emily Virgin is the House Minority Leader. She was elected to the House in 2011, and she represents District 44 in Cleveland County. Senator Greg Treat is the President Pro Tem of the Senate. He was elected in 2011. He represents District 47, which encompasses Northwest Oklahoma City and portions of Edmond, Deer Creek, and Bethany. And Senator Kevin Matthews, one of our own, is the, for the Democratic Caucus Chair, elected to the Senate in 2015. He represents District 11, which includes portions of Osage and Tulsa counties. Good morning, welcome to all of you. Okay, it's kind of tradition on these things. We start with something a little bit more lighthearted. Baseball players, from the time they walk to the dugout to the plate, have a walk-up song, the song that, they, that uh, goes for them. So we wanna ask you, each one of you, and we'll start with, uh, with the Speaker of the House. What song would you say represents your feelings about starting the 2022 session? Every thank you. It's great to be with you this morning, and I appreciate everybody that's here today. <clears throat> you know, I really I was contemplating this. You know, I'm a I'm really a basketball player, not a baseball player. But if I had to come up with uh, uh, maybe a, an artist uh, in terms of what I think the session will be like this year, you know, I I, I think it's going to be high energy. I think it, you know it's an election year. I think everybody's going to be very passionate about their issues and about their their districts. I also think they're going to be very passionate about seeing the state of Oklahoma continue to make strides forward. So I think it's going to be kind of a Simon Wright type of year, an ACDC, you know, back in black, high energy type of uh, session. That's what I'd go with. That's a good start. Okay. Representative Virgin, I think you're sitting on this. This is your fastball. Let's see what, see what you got. What's your, what's your song? Yeah, I was, uh, 
I, I had fun thinking about this one um, and I appreciate the speaker's answer. He clearly put some thought into it as well. Um, you know, Tom Petty is one of my favorite artists and I went through, you know, his sort of catalog and this is my last session. And <clears throat> we also will be dealing with, um, I think, quite a few medical marijuana issues. So I'm going to go with Mary Jane's Last Dance. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I don't know how to follow that, but uh, Senator Treat, you get to. What is your, uh, your song that describes the 2022 session? Yeah, I, I like both of the answers. I like Leader Virgins a lot. I didn't even think about that being your last session. Great answer. Uh, you know, I think as you go into session, you get a lot of critics for everything you're doing, uh, no matter what. And so I thought of Garth Brooks standing outside the fire. Uh, life is not living. It's merely surviving if you're standing outside the fire. So when you see all of us making mistakes or set bumbling around on words, just remember we're inside that fire. Very good. You guys have really put some thought on this. All right, Senator Matthews, welcome this morning. What would be uh, the song that you say represents your feelings for the start of the 2022 legislative session? Every, I think we're having a little bit of technical difficulty. Right. We'll so. catch up with him along the way then and just uh, let me know kind of when he's on. I'll start off with this. I have questions for each one of you individually. I want to start with, with uh, Pro Tem Tree. You, uh, you personally have a bill that's sometimes called the backpack bill or, uh, or voucher bill. That basically, the idea being that, hey, it's the parent's money and the parent's child. They should be the ones to decide where those go. And that would give you options of you know public school, private school, charter school, anything else out there. Opponents say that, wait, that takes the public out of public education, and it's only the ones who are going to be able to afford to take their kids there that that will work for. What are you looking to accomplish, and what do you think is the benefit for Oklahoma? Yeah, thank you, Deborah. I appreciate that. Uh, the Oklahoma Empowerment Act uh, seeks to put parents in charge of their kids' education. I've been reading the Tulsa World. I see the Tulsa World is not a big fan, but that's no surprise to me uh, that they're not a fan of that. Last year, we made huge strides. Uh, in giving parents more control through uh, open transfer and within public schools and then the Opportunity Scholarship Fund funding that in a real way, really for the first time in a long time. And so this is just another step in that process of putting parents back in charge of what makes sense for their kids' education. And it literally just gives the state funding formula, the average state funding formula, gives that to those parents for educational needs and lets them use it wherever they see fit for their kids. Thank you. And the next one for Speaker McCall, this uh, last session, you uh, spent some time talking about lowering taxes and were able to do some things there. Again, proponents say this creates more uh, competitive environment for us, greater economic growth that begins to pay for those. Opponents say, hey, we did this once before and we ended up with teachers in the Capitol. What say you? What are you trying to accomplish here and why is that good for Oklahoma? Well, you've um, obviously um, it's a uh, I believe it's great policy and it's shown an increased state revenues this year. Um, I think tax reform is always something that we have to have a conversation about and try to move forward on in terms of being competitive in the region economically uh, for jobs and industry. There's certainly uh, lots of companies looking at the, at the state of Oklahoma, uh, leaving the coastal areas. Uh, Oklahoma is definitely in the, the top five uh, States, I believe that many companies, uh, tech companies, uh, innovative companies are looking at you know, because of our co low cost of living and our low uh, energy costs in the state. Uh, but our tax structure is not uh, is not ideal comp compared to our other uh, competitors out there in other states, and oftentimes we lose uh, out on those companies uh, because of that. So, you know, I think it's something that we have to take. We have to make sure that we have a, a very um, a great environment tax-wise for the people who live here in the state as well as, uh, as uh, the businesses. I um, also, you know, and I think that conversation, you know, we were happy to, I was excited to start that conversation last session um, with corporate income tax um, phase-out discussion, which I just think is archaic that we still have in the state of Oklahoma. It just doesn't bring that much money into the states to the state's bottom line, but we also have to push down and um, we have to push down those rates for for the citizens of the state as well. I think this year uh, on the on the tax discussion, I think you'll see a lot of um, a lot of talk and and discussion around the inflation that's in 
in our state's economy as well as our nation. And uh, we'll be looking at tax reform through a, through a lens of, you know, how can we help the people of the state of Oklahoma combat inflation? Thanks. Well, while we're uh, working still on technical issues to get Senator Matthews in, uh, Representative Virgin, I kind of think you can handle the, the loyal opposition all on your own here if you have to. Uh, you are not only in the minority, you have a supermajority on the other side, a lot of R's on that, that side. You've heard two ideas, very uh, strong ideas here from the two uh, leaders on the Republican side. What will your delegation be looking at, your caucus be looking at on those? Are you going to oppose all completely? Is there room for compromise? How would you look at that? Well, I think we've already seen that there's some bipartisan agreement among uh, some of the issues. Senator Treat and I have both filed legislation to end the state sales tax on groceries and give folks that relief that Senator that, that Speaker McCall was just speaking about. And so I, I hope that we can find some agreement there. You know, we've we've seen a lot of tax reform in recent years, but one thing that we haven't touched is the most regressive tax that we have in the state, and, and that's the sales tax. Of course, if there are folks from the city of Tulsa on this call, I want to make sure that we 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 tell them that this is just a state portion, but I, I hope that this starts a conversation on how we fund our cities and towns in Oklahoma. We're the only state in the nation that funds cities uh, solely based on the sales tax. And so most other states have a mixture, and I think that that would be a much better model for us. I think that we also will have some overlap and, and some agreement on criminal justice reform issues. The Senate uh, Appropriations Chair Roger Thompson talked about ending fines and fees in our criminal justice system. We know that that is a system that keeps folks involved in the system because of the debt uh, that, that they're forced to pay after they're prosecuted. So that's long been a priority of ours to go back to a system of funding core public safety services through the general revenue. So I think you'll see quite a bit of agreement. We'll, we'll also see quite a bit of disagreement as is the nature of the system. Um, and I know that, that the speaker and the pro tem understand the job of the minority. Indeed, they do. That's great. Just in case you're wondering, uh, we're still trying to get uh, Senator Matthews and we're having some technical difficulty. I see up on my screen, Katie Hinkie's working very hard at it. So as soon as he's on, we'll make sure he gets involved in this. The rest of these questions, I kind of want each of you to respond to, and we'll start with uh, Senator uh, Treat on this. Last uh, couple of years, we've uh, the challenges have taken place. We've heard about something called ARPA, which turns out to be the American Rescue Plan spending. Where will that money go in Oklahoma? And specifically, will it be made available for tourism, which is one of the one voice priorities? And Senator Treat, I think you're on mute. Oh, thank you. I have a double thank mute system on my deal, both my microphone and my computer, just in case I say something I don't want to uh, be broadcast. But uh, <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I think you'll see that process include tourism. Obviously, that's one of the uh, authorized uses from the Department of Treasury. We are waiting on guidance from Treasury on a lot of it. It's still not finalized some of that, but the um, the committee structure that the House and Senate has set up to go through the ARPA process has been working, working well, uh, vetting projects. We have, I think, near $9 billion in request of that money. So we're trying to vet that and go down. We've uh, authorized two projects waiting on executive action on that. And so, yes, to answer your central question, I think tourism absolutely fits within the scope of the ARPA dollars, and we are considering those projects uh, with all due merit. Speaker McCall, how about you, ARPA money? What's, what are you, how are you looking at? What should it be used for? What are the principles you have in mind? Well, they, they, the ARPA monies are, I mean, and I checked yesterday and uh, Senator Treats is, is correct. I mean, it's near $9 billion. It's actually, it's, it's now surpassed 10 billion as of, of yesterday in terms of requests. We, we're talking about $1.8 billion that have been allocated to the state of Oklahoma. Um, directly. No, I think absolutely. I mean, tourism is one of the biggest biggest economic drivers in the state of Oklahoma, um, whether it's uh, urban, suburban, or rural uh, Oklahoma. So I think those projects are, are certainly um, within the scope of, of consideration. There's obviously going to have to be some 
some type of, uh, there is a scoring model in place um, by Guidehouse and, and those uh, projects will be scored. I think you'll see, you know, this process, there's a lot of pro uh, projects being submitted. You know, I, I, would, I think you'll see those um, move through the system over the next two to three years. And um, the legislature is moving through those as quickly as they can. We've got a, a great standing committee that's done a lot of great work at the, at the governor's request. And they'll continue to work and those projects will be uh, forwarded on for, for approval. Representative Virgin, ARPA funds. Not much to add, but I, I want to commend the, the process. I think that as opposed to what we saw in other rounds of federal funding that had a much quicker expiration date on spending those funds. We have more time to decide what we're going to do with these funds. I think that the pediatric mental health beds are an incredible investment and a huge need in our state. And so I hope that what we continue to see is that we can invest in some long needed priorities like those pediatric mental health beds, perhaps um, investment in other mental health beds for, uh, for adults as well. But I think it gives us a real opportunity to invest in, in some capital projects and in some, in some projects that affect people that we haven't had the opportunity to do in a long time. Thank you very much. This, uh, we'll start off this next round with uh, Speaker McCall. Tell us just briefly, what are your caucus's top priorities this session? What are you trying to come out of there with? Well, I think the, the number one uh, priority in, in terms of what I hear from the members uh, talking about is from their constituencies and their districts. One of the common themes that we, we hear ha is uh, regarding the, the marijuana industry in the state of Oklahoma and, and more specifically with the grow facilities across the state. Um, and more specifically, illegal grow facilities across the state. So you will, uh, I think you'll see uh, the House uh, members really trying to address, address that and provide additional uh, law and support to the executive branch for enforcement in that area. Uh, this is a still somewhat of a very new industry for the state of Oklahoma, but it's an industry that, that's still uh, very popular uh, among people. Uh, and the, the uh, executive branch, uh, we need to ensure that they have the resources to stand up the regulatory and the law enforcement uh, side of, of, uh, of uh, enforcement on the grow facilities. Also, you have uh, this testing is still, uh, still new in terms of developing uh, seed to sell, uh, some other concepts that are already in law that uh, have uh, court challenges. We'll see how those play out, but you know it's it's definitely a, a very uh, a, a booming uh, industry in the state of Oklahoma. But there are some some uh, illegal activities and some bad actors, and we need to make sure that that does not uh, negatively impact uh, the good actors in the industry. Thank you, Representative Virgin. The Democrats. What's, what is your caucus? What are your priorities? What do you hope to have happen in this your last session, as you said? Well, I talked a little bit about criminal justice reform and the state sales tax on groceries. I want to talk, though, about education. We have a lot of former educators in our caucus. We have long fought for greater investment in education. We had historic investment a few years ago, but we know that states around us are continuing to invest in their teachers and their students as well. So we think that it's it's time to make sure that we are competitive in the region in terms of teacher salary and also in per pupil expenditures. We know we're falling behind in both of those areas. But in terms of education, we also plan to make sure that we are defending our teachers. Um, we have seen a lot of bills that have been filed that are attacking curriculum, they're attacking um, school libraries. And so we wanna make sure that teachers are able to do their job without fear. And we know that, that teachers go into the profession not for the amount of money that they make, but they go into it because it's important work and we need to respect them. We know that, that teachers and, and students in college are, are simply not choosing to go into education now. And we think that this rash of headlines and 
these bills that have been filed attacking teachers, that 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 will not help the teacher shortage. And so we want to make sure that we stop those in their tracks. We also will be fighting pretty hard against um, any any uh, effort to send public money to private schools. And we feel that 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 we simply cannot uh, co-sign onto any legislation that sends public money to private schools. We know that we have a lot of investment to do in our private schools and sending money away from those schools is simply not the way to improve education for all students in Oklahoma. Thank you. And then uh, pro tem treat the priorities of the Senate Republicans. Yeah, thank you, Debbie. Man, I was hoping I was going to have uh, Leader Virgin's support on my legislation. That <laughs> mark that off. The the uh, I think the uh, Senate Republican Caucus. You'll see us laser focused on trying to protect the dignity of life from preborn all the way through the end of life. So life issues will take a huge priority, as they always do. I think economic development and trying to develop a workforce. We're able to recruit and and be very successful on the recruiting trail on new businesses, and I'm sure the Tulsa Chamber is well aware of this, but one of the impediments to actually landing some of those deals is a, a workforce. And so the education pipeline from common education through career tech and, and up to higher ed, we need to make sure that we have a workforce that's ready. So when we go out and recruit these businesses, we can land them. That, that will be a priority. Some tax reform that's already been mentioned. Uh, will be a priority of trying to get relief uh, to Oklahomans, pushing back on federal overreach, uh, continuing that push to make sure that we defend Oklahoma's right to govern ourselves. Uh, and you'll see us also do some process changes in the Senate. Some people are um, wrongly thinking it's a rules change. It won't actually be a rules change, but it will be a process change to where we hopefully are much more deliberative and much more transparent We'll have morning and afternoon sessions uh, on the floor, even during committee work, to try to get through bills where we're not cramming 100 bills through a day, where we can actually sit through and vet these bills the way they uh, deserve to be vetted. So I think you'll see uh, several of those priorities executed on very early on in session. Thank you, Senator Matthews. It's good we finally get, could get the uh, technical problem solved. It's good to see you again, sir. If you would unmute, mute, I'm going to give you a chance just to talk a little bit about the priorities of the, the Senate Democrats and, and what you want to see happen this session. Well, thank you. Our, our priorities are going to be around education, health care, infrastructure, criminal justice reform, and health care this session. We, we talked a little bit, I want to continue with you, Senator Matthews, give you a little bit of time here since we didn't get a chance to, a little bit about the ARPA funds that we have access to. What uh, what do you think the priorities are there? And specifically, we were asking as part of the Tulsa One Voice process, do you think they should be made available for tourism as well? Well, uh, anybody that's been following my work, that's been my top priority is uh, tourism, tourism as we Built Greenwood Rising, and in Oklahoma City, they're doing the Clara Lupa Civil Rights Center. I'm trying to bring people through the state uh, and actually bring the civil, U.S. Civil Rights Trail to the state of Oklahoma. As you know, uh, tourism is the third largest revenue driver in the state. And if we can bring more people to the state, we bring more tax dollars to the state. And so that very important to me. And as we talk about infrastructure, infrastructure and economic development, that's going to be important in Tulsa and across the state. And so that's one of my number one priorities. And it's one of our uh, Senate Democrat priorities as well. So in hearing you all, it sounds like there's some things you're going to be working on together and a few you may be on the opposite sides of, but what we've always seen from you guys, unlike our friends in Washington, you guys do it well. You disagree well with each other and that's the way it ought to be. Thank you. I want to wrap this up and give you all a chance to uh, just give a final word here and take one minute uh, to tell us anything that we didn't miss, that we missed out on or that you'd like to make sure it's said. And I'd like to start with Representative Virgin. 
Well, thanks, Debra, and thanks everyone for having us and for being here this morning. I wish we were in person. I think we were not in person last year as well. Um, so <laughs> maybe my maybe my successor will get to be in person with you all next year. But um, you know, in thinking about the legislative process, just in general, I've had a lot of time to to dig into it over almost twelve years and. One thing that, that I hope that we can tackle is just bringing more transparency to the legislative process. And I think that, that the public right now is, is wanting reasons to trust uh, their government, whether it's the state government or the federal government. And I think that by giving them more information and by being open and transparent with them about what's going on is a great way to do that. We have headlines right now about uh, Epic Charter Schools and the lack of action on um, public money essentially going into the pockets of a couple uh, private businessmen. And we have to do something about that. Um, I hope that our attorney general takes action. I hope that the legislature takes action to prevent that from ever happening again. But we also have legislation to, uh, to make sure that the legislature abides by the same rules that every public body in Oklahoma does by making us subject to the Open Meetings and Open Records Act. Um, and so I hope that in, in terms of our everyday legislative process and also with uh, the budget spending billions of taxpayer dollars that we can really bring some sunshine to the process this session. And uh, Leader Treat, I'm gonna have you, if we could come do a little audible here, we're almost completely out of time, but I'm gonna let you do the Republican summation, if you will, on behalf of everyone, since uh, we'll, we'll call uh, Emily's the uh, Democratic summation. Uh, all right, Debra, I appreciate it. I'm not often authorized to speak on behalf of the House, so I feel like it's powerful <laughs> right now. Uh, no, I, I, wanna, I wanna tell everyone uh, in Tulsa, I wish I could have been up there. I had a ton of meetings scheduled for uh, today uh to to meet with people that i haven't met with in a couple of weeks and and uh so we'll have to reschedule those i always appreciate the opportunity to come back to where i'm actually from i'm from katusa and so get to see a lot of people up there that i haven't seen in a while but this session i think when you see senator matthews leader virgin speaker mccall myself and leader floyd when she's on here we all have a genuine relationship and i want you all to leave with that knowing that it's not like Washington, D.C. We can actually have conversations. Yes, we have adamant disagreements at times, sometimes within our own party and sometimes across the aisle. But we all have genuine friendships and we all want to move the state of Oklahoma forward. I think this session stands to be a very productive session. And I think it's not just because of Republican leadership. I'm proud of the leadership that Speaker McCall and I provide to our various chambers. But Leader Virgin, Senator Matthews, Leader Floyd, they all do uh, the state honorably uh, in their service, and I, it's an honor to serve with everyone on this panel. Thank you, and I just had an audible to my audible, according to uh, Elizabeth Osborne, who I listen to on everything. And so she said, if we would please give the speaker a, a, a chance as well to uh, have final word that you might want to say, uh, Speaker McCall. Well, thank you. Yeah, once again, I just uh, echo the comments of my colleagues. I, I think at the end of the day, uh, one of the great things about Oklahoma and the state legislature is there's a high level of civility. There's a lot of spirit and passionate debate. There's a difference of opinion, but that's the way that's the way it's, the structure is is meant to be set up. And we'll we'll take on those issues. And we I think there's not one of us on this panel today that doesn't want to see Oklahoma do exceedingly well. And we all have different ideas on how to arrive at that outcome. And, and those are the things that we're going to work out. We're going to continue. There's several issues that we haven't talked about today that are, that are priorities uh, for, the, for our caucuses and for the state of Oklahoma. And uh, we'll get to see those play out during this session. And I look forward uh, to great outcomes. I want to thank you all. We could have done this all day long with you guys. You, you are uh, outstanding public servants, all of you, and we appreciate very much you coming on and spending time with us this morning. Thank you very much. With that, we're going to throw this to Elizabeth Osborne, Senior Vice President of Government Affairs, and she's going to talk to a lot of representatives. Elizabeth. Thank you so much, Devery, and, and thank you once again to Pro Tem Treat, to Speaker McCall, Minority Leader Virgin, and Caucus Chair Matthews. Thank you all so much for being a part of today's event. We look forward to working with each of you this year and moving Oklahoma forward. 
So now we're going to hear from some of their colleagues in the Oklahoma legislature regarding their most pressing issues. We have a number of legislators with us on the call today, and we want to give as many of them as possible a chance to speak. So it's been a while since we've done one of these breakfasts, so here's how things will work. I will call out a legislator and you'll have a moment to make sure you're on camera, make sure you're unmuted. We'll put up a timer for about two minutes and we run really close to time here. Um, we'll put up a two minute timer and you'll get to talk about any of your priorities or anything you want to communicate to the close to 150 people on this call. So let's get started first with Tulsa's own Senator Dave Rader and Tulsa's own Joanna Dossett will be on deck. So Senator Rader, you are up. Thank you, Elizabeth. A couple of bills um, I'll highlight here because I know we all want to highlight all of our bills and hoping that they'll all have a hearing and be passed. Um, a couple that um, affect Tulsa. One is a, a Tulsa County request in modernizing um, uh, the way the counties can govern. Uh, as you know, most of uh, the leeway that's given to the counties comes through the state. This bill will allow this, the counties to be able to handle some um, public safety issues, some enforcement, uh, uh, code issues, uh, some public service programs, just giving them a little more leeway. It's for uh, counties that are over 50,000 and trying to uh, address the needs of uh, some unincorporated areas of those counties where some of the people kind of feel like they're left out. The one bill that's gonna take the majority of my time is Senate Bill 1646 is a sentencing reform bill where we are uh, taking um, the what the reclassification council uh, gave in the report last fall and trying to follow the, um, the mandate of um, Senate Bill 1098 that came out in 2018 um, asking for reclassification of our crimes and the levels of crimes in, in our state. And then at the same time, uh, having a way to either keep the number of incarcerated at a level that it is now or reduce it. Uh, Senate Bill 1646 will uh, address those issues and I'm looking forward to run that. We will leave the 85% crimes alone and dwell on the uh, four, 35 to 40% of incarcerated that are non 85% uh, level crimes in that bill. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thank you very much, Senator Rader. Now, Senator Joanna Dossett, you are up and on deck. We will have Creek County's own Kyle Hilbert coming up next. Thank you, Elizabeth, and thank you, Tulsa Regional Chamber, for having us this morning. I'm Senator Joanna Dossett from District 35 right here in Tulsa, and I'm going to tell you about two bills I'll be working on this session. One's an old bill from last session, and one's a brand new one. The old one is Senate Bill 849. It has to do with the Maternal Mortality Review Committee that we have already in place here in Oklahoma. It's going to require some additional statistical supporting uh, reporting pardon to the legislature on an annual basis. The idea behind this uh, is that the legislature hasn't been receiving the information it needs in order to address our ongoing problem with maternal mortality here in Oklahoma. We still have a rate that's uh, quite a bit higher than the national average. And I think getting the right information to the legislature in a timely manner would help us um, tackle that problem via the legislative process. The new bill that I'm working on this session is Senate Bill 1539 and it would make adjustments to the weights applied to various categories of students within our already existing uh, school funding formula. So the categories I'm speaking of um, are students uh, who have a speech or language impairment, uh, students who are categorized as bilingual, and students who are economically disadvantaged. This bill would increase the weight applied to each of those categories within the, the school funding formula. And that's all for me this morning. Thanks again, Elizabeth and Chamber. Thank you, Senator, very much. Representative Hilbert is next and on deck will be Representative Melody Blancet. Good morning, good to be with everybody today. Um, also wish we could be in person, but good that we have this option. Uh, first, I wanna talk about ARPA. Um, I serve as co-chair of the Health and Human Services um, Working Group for ARPA with Senator John Haste. And something that we've been working diligently on is the healthcare workforce shortage. Uh, we held public hearings back in the fall from stakeholders all across the board. And almost every single group that came to testify before us said the number one issue that they're facing in healthcare is the nursing shortage. 
And so um, next Thursday, we'll be holding a public hearing where we'll, we'll be hearing from higher ed career tech institutions across the state um, and, and hopefully advancing some of those projects to move across the finish line. I'm, I'm very excited about it. Um, you know, it's not going to do anything to address the nursing shortage that we have today, but it is something that's going to help our nursing shortage two, three years down the road, because this was a problem pre-COVID, but COVID's only exacerbated it. And um, in the last year, unfortunately, we've seen where there have been Oklahomans, and this isn't a problem unique to Oklahoma, but there have been Oklahomans who've died from otherwise preventable causes just because we didn't have enough nurses. And, um, and so we, we have to address that. Uh, another big issue I'm working on with the Tulsa Chamber is a fix on ad valorem reimbursement. We had um, several companies, some in the Tulsa area, who uh, got kicked out of the ad valorem reimbursement program due to COVID and that um, hurting their employment uh, requirements. And so that's something I've been working on with the Tulsa Chamber, the State Chamber, Senator Montgomery, Senator Hall, and some others, and uh, something I hope we can get across the finish line certainly don't want to punish companies due to COVID, um, but it should be a great session and uh, looking forward to it and looking forward to working with the Tulsa Chamber on this. Thank you very much, Representative, and thank you for your work on that bill. I know we have a lot of employers on the call that appreciate your work in that regard, so thank you again. Now, Representative Blancet, and we have Representative Melissa Provenzano, who will be on deck next. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Elizabeth. I appreciate being here. I've got a few things that I want to highlight just real quickly. One of the most important things I think that I'm working on this session that I've been working on all summer is um, an effort that is around criminal justice reform, but this really has to do with taking a step back and applying really some smart processes to determine policy going forward in this area. We passed the state question 780 and 781. Unfortunately, 781 was, hasn't been funded yet. So consequently, we put in place 780, but we've not put the resources in place via 781 to provide those county and local municipalities the opportunity to fund diversion programs that are we know that are very successful. So one of the things that I am working on um, with a national organization called the Crime and Justice Institute, as well as a number of people across the aisle, both in the Senate and the House, and that is to collect county jail data. Right now, there is no aggregated source of county jail data anywhere in the state. We can't make good policy unless we know what is driving incarceration and what that incarceration is doing and how it's being managed in the county systems. I'm also working on affordable housing solutions. Right now in Tulsa, we've got 4,500 families that are voucher approved for Section 8 housing and can't find housing. So I'm going to be working on a tenant incentive uh, initiation that will hopefully assist that. I'm working with the commercial audio industry to augment the film and television industry, and we'll be working on both ARPA and the LOFT committees in the coming session. Thank you very much, Representative Lancet, and thank you for your work on, on the film and arts industry. That's something that we're, we're very passionate about um, growing here in Tulsa. Now, Representative Provenzano and Representative Jeff Boatman will be up. Thank you. Thanks for, for having us. Uh, and I appreciate the quick shift uh, due to the snow. Uh, this session, uh, I will be working uh, on education policy primarily um, to one, to continue the work that we have begun uh, minimizing the excessive professional development requirements uh, at the state level for our teachers allowing them more time in the classroom. Uh, the other piece in education policy I'll be working on is increasing the number of uh, students in our state that complete the FAFSA in order to go on to uh, college or career tech. 
um, whatever their plan may be after high school. Um, I'll also be working to support the efforts to make teacher salaries uh, more competitive regionally as we continue to see other states um, step up their game, we, we must do the same, as well as efforts to increase the number of community schools in our state. Um, we have an exemplary model right here uh, in Tulsa with Union Public Schools, um, it works. And if we want to know how to increase student outcomes, uh, that's that's where we need to start. Um, beyond that, I'll be also working to, to fight the education policy that does not benefit the students in our state as well as uh, uh, in, in the Tulsa area in the form of vouchers or library censorship, um, reducing safety requirements while at school, those sorts of things. I've seen a lot of bills uh, roll out more so than ever before that are deeply concerning on the education front. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative. Next, we have Representative Jeff Boatman up and on deck will be Lonnie Sims and then Senator Joe Newhouse. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, everybody, for the opportunity to speak. I, I see on the timer that I have two hours. Uh, I should only need about half of that, so I'll, I'll try to keep it slow. Um, I, I have three bills I want to highlight real quickly. Um, a couple of business related bills. Oklahoma uses a, a three factor determinant of corporate income tax, uh, whereas most of the states have moved to a, a single factor formula that, that tends to disadvantage our small business in the states that, that happen to do business outside of Oklahoma. And then it, it misses revenue that should be coming into Oklahoma from out of state businesses that do business here. So I, I do have a bill uh, that, that changes that apportionment factor to a single factor of sales, does away with what's called the throwback rule. Uh, this, this was a state chamber priority. I'm, I'm sure Tulsa chamber priority on that one as well. Um, uh, that's just gonna be good for our small businesses and, and tries to get taxing a little bit more equitable. Um, I'm, I'm also looking at a, a small, working with Department of Commerce on a small business purchasing hub. We have a number of small businesses in construction specifically that have a hard time competing with larger uh, in-state and out-of-state businesses on, on the state construction projects. And, and we want to kind of even the playing field and let some of those small players have an opportunity to, to get in and be able to, to purchase. Uh, and, and then the third bill I want to highlight, the speaker uh, allowed me to serve on a human trafficking task force this past interim. Uh, I, I think we as a state probably don't recognize how big of a problem we have with human trafficking. And we, we all can tend to think kind of think of Liam Neeson with a specific set of skills. And that, that's really not the problem. It's a homegrown problem. Uh, it, it's a problem that we need to address and do better at. And so I have a, a bill that will uh, work with the AG's office to develop a human trafficking prevention unit and provide uh, aggregated data so that we can attack that problem in a much better fashion. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Representative Boatman. Now we have Representative Lonnie Sims, and as I said, Senator Joe Newhouse will be on deck. Thank you, Elizabeth. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Well, I was kind of disappointed we didn't get the walk-up music. I was kind of thinking more in the lines of Welcome to the Jungle by uh, Guns N' Roses. Perfect. So, <laughs> so it, it, it sounds like leadership has a much calmer session in store for us, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, you know, really kind of my mountain to climb that I found in, in my first session was following the 2019 Arkansas River flood event. I conducted an interim study, put together some legislation to really help uh, our entire state kind of get a game plan together when it comes to natural disasters. You know, for a kid that grew up here, I think we just kind of get used to, we're going to have natural disasters every year. It's kind of our Super Bowl and it's can be fun, but uh, you know what's left in the wake of those is devastation. You've really seen the impact in the rural areas. So what my bill does is kind of empower the local communities to kind of save themselves and to start reinvesting in that infrastructure out there. It's it's an extremely tough mountain to climb, uh, as you know. Ablorm in rural circles is is a, a no go zone. So we really have to craft it in a way that protects you know, our ag partners in these areas, because that is the, the chief business. Uh, but we've also got to find a way to empower uh, those local communities, whether it's through public-private partnerships, 
uh, through just individual pro projects that they need approved a bridge, extending water supply. But uh, Oklahoma, if we had a cash crop, natural disasters is pretty good. You know, uh, we're gonna have them every year. We're gonna have opportunities to get matching funds and grants through FEMA. Half the counties in the state can't qualify to pay that match. So uh, hopefully the bills I have will help change that dynamic. Thank you very much, Representative. We appreciate your work. We now have Senator Joe Newhouse and Representative John Waldron will be on deck to bring us home. Great, Elizabeth, uh, good morning to you. I know that uh, you and I and Connor, we want to have a snowball fight after this, but we're meeting a uh, virtual, so we can't do that this time. Maybe, maybe next time right there. Um, sure. Well, this is my sixth session walking in into the state Senate. It's an honor to serve Tulsa. Thank you guys for letting me represent you. I had some great conversations with uh, Senate uh, Pro Tem Treat past few weeks. Uh, he's asked me to come back to the Education Committee. I'm very excited about that. Although I'll be leaving the Finance Committee chaired by Senator Rader, who does a very powerful job in the Finance Committee, but I'm excited about education. We need some good educational reforms, and this can be a great session for that. It, you know, in the aftermath of COVID, uh, just a lot of um, you know some some poor results and lots of uh, picking up to do, and we do do some, some positive ways uh, forward. If you look at some of our testing uh, results uh, in 2019, for example, with Tulsa Public Schools, only 14% of, of our students were testing proficient. Two years later, so 2021, that number's down to 9%. So less than 10% of our students at TPS are testing proficient. We've got to rally behind our schools as a community. This is not a blame game. This is, let's all work together as a village, uh, making sure that we take care of each and every one of our students. So I'm excited about that. Let's work together for, for the betterment of, of Tulsa for our schools. Uh, well, uh, finally, Elizabeth, um, I'm excited about the Tulsa Chamber coming to, to the Capitol on March 1st and 2nd. And this is always a very fun time. If you guys are coming out for the very, your very first time, it's a great evening. And then like the, the next day we get together and talk more about uh, more policies. I'm excited to host you guys. Please feel free to come by my office. Elizabeth, thank you so much for having us today. Well, thank you, Senator Newhouse, and thank you for that wonderful promo to everyone on, <laughs> on today's event to please register for our day at the Capitol, March Absolutely. 2nd. It's going to be a, a fantastic event. We're moving back to a two-day event, and it'll be a, a great reception, a fun Mardi Gras reception on March 1st. Yes. So please, please come by and celebrate Shrove Tuesday with us. Uh, next on deck, um, bringing us home today, we have Representative John Waldron. He'll be our final legislative speaker. Thank you, Representative Waldron. Thank you, Elizabeth, and go Hornets. It's always great to be the last speaker. Absolutely. Everybody is happy to see you. Um, House Bill 1775 created a lot of ambiguity among social studies teachers about what it's safe to teach. Uh, we've had uh, the graphic novel Mouse uh, banned in Tennessee, and in Texas, they're having a debate about how to teach both sides of the Holocaust. So I'll be sponsoring Holocaust education lesson, um, uh, legislation in cooperation with the Jewish Federations of Tulsa and Oklahoma City. What we want to do is create um, a, a safe space to talk about difficult but important subjects every American should know about. After all, the greatest generation liberated the concentration camps. Uh, Oklahomans need to talk, uh, need to be able to talk about hate and the danger that it poses by learning the lessons of history. And so I've got House Bills 3720 and 3721 on that subject. I'm glad Senator Newhouse brought up education and one of the great aspects of the crisis in education is the teacher exodus in Oklahoma. Something like half the teachers in Tulsa Public Schools these days are emergency certified and the majority of teachers coming into the system have emergency or alternative certification credentials instead of the traditional university credential, which is unfortunate because graduates of our education colleges stay the longest in the profession. And we end up spending a lot of money inboarding new teachers in rotation because we aren't attracting young people into the profession. So I'm running House Bill 3722, which will incentivize ed educators to graduate from our four-year universities and go into the college with that, uh, into the schools with a greater level of preparation. And I'm also working on an overall compensation package. We made historic investments in teacher salaries, but we omitted staff and inflation has eaten up many of those gains. It's time to take the next step forward for Oklahoma educators. Uh, if we take care of the teachers, they'll take care of the students and everyone will benefit. That's it.
Thank you very much. I really appreciate the chamber for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Representative Waldron. And I can say from personal experience at Dear Booker T. Washington High School, you are a fantastic teacher, Representative Waldron. So thank you very, very much. I will now hand things off to Devery. Thank you all of our legislators for being here. We love being able to hear from you directly. Devery, Thanks, Appreciate it. And it is great to hear from all of you directly. That is a wonderful thing that the uh, chamber does to provide that and uh, look forward to doing these the rest of the year in person so that we can hear from them. I also want to take this time to uh, thank our presenting sponsors again today. That is American Bank and Trust Company, One Gas, the Osteopathic Founders Foundation, and TTCU Federal Credit Union for their generous support of change your for chamber programming. Now, if you joined late or you just want to share this event with somebody, the recording will be on the chamber's YouTube account, or you can just call and ask Mike Neal. He'll come to your house and read to the transcript because he's that much into customer service or not. May need to check on that. This was also a rep for the, uh, brought to our attention from Senator Newhouse and, uh, and also that uh, the chamber's one voice day is March 1st and 2nd, but you're going to need to sign up for some of this stuff. It's a two-day event. starts with this wonderful reception the night before where you get to talk to not only your peers, but a lot of elected officials who are there in a much more casual setting. And then the next day on the 2nd, attendees will go to the Capitol building for a full day of education and advocacy featuring issue briefings and meetings with legislators. Now, you have to register for the trip, and you can do so and reserve your room at the Chamber's Hotel Block at 21C Museum Hotel, and that has, can be done on the events page at tulsachamber.com. But please take note that the room block closes on February 18th, February 18th, to be able to get in on a room. So please make sure that you register soon. I want to thank the chamber staff for jumping through 5,000 hoops to go from having an in-person event, to putting this on. It, sometimes you don't know how much that uh, goes on behind the scenes and all that they do. This was a really incredible job. Thank all of you for joining us here today. Look forward to seeing you again in person very soon and drive safe and be careful out there. Have a good day.